My name is Jeff St. Laurent. This is the Live Tuesday Call. I just spent some good time with the people that called in live, uh, just talking about some good things in terms of you know developing content and then also getting some ideas on what they would like to hear from today's topic, which is the fundamentals of selling coaching. So if you do have the opportunity to call in live sometimes, um, I'd love to have you there. That's part of the benefits of calling in is we get to have that conversation. And I, I always love that too because it's, it's nice to connect with uh, my audience. And that's what our business is about. It's about you know building and nurturing an audience that we define who they are and we find out where they are. And then uh, we provide them with some great value and nurture that relationship in, in the hopes that at some point when the timing's right, they'll be like, you know what? This person can help me and they'll hire us. And we're going to go with that into more detail today as I talk about the fundamentals of selling coaching. But before I do that, I want to let you know, obviously, I do record these calls and I post them all on my sellingcoaching.com website under the university. So please check that out. Uh, I do this because I'm very passionate about helping coaches like yourself transition to a full-time business. And when I say a full-time business, it doesn't mean, oh, I'm working full-time like time, 40 hours, let's say. It means that you're earning a full-time income to support your lifestyle and or your financial responsibilities. I don't care if it's 10 hours a week or 500 hours a week. That would be my definition of a full-time business is supporting yourself. So got a lot of great uh, resources there on sellingcoaching.com under the university. Right on the homepage, another fantastic resource I definitely want you to take advantage of is the ultimate startup guide for new coaches. You'll find it as I bribe you with my dog there. Um, and so you'll see what I, you mean when, what I mean when, when you get there. Uh, but not only will you get the great resource, but that's going to put you on my email community and you're going to be able to see how I stay in touch with my audience uh, using email. Not only will you get some great content as I write there you know, each and every week, but also um, you're going to see how I utilize that and I want to teach you how to utilize that and whether it's just by observing or maybe one of the things I also offer is one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring. If you know you're in a position where you really do need some help and whether you're frustrated and you uh, you can't figure this out on your own and you're overwhelmed or you don't want to get to that point and you want to just, hey, I want to rock this thing and really move forward, um, you know, consider uh, taking a closer look at how I could assist you if you were to hire me as your mentor coach. So you can go to sellingcoaching.com under the work with me page. At the bottom, I've got a form there. Fill that form out. I'm going to follow up with you directly. We'll create a relaxed conversation and we can get a feel for where we can go and what the appropriate steps are from there. But today, we're going to talk about selling coaching and the fundamentals of selling. And obviously, what I love the most, and the, the name of my business is selling coaching. And I always tell people like, hey, the name of your business is the least important. Your headline is, that's why when you go to sellingcoaching.com, you'll see helping coaches transition to a full-time business. But with that being said, you know, uh, the foundation of what I do with everybody as I help coaches transition to full-time is relating every back to everything back to the skill set of selling because you know doing this full time since 2004 that's what i found really understanding and putting time into really understand how that works in selling uh, despite all the, my viewpoints and perceptions around what selling maybe is or should be or has to be etc and whether that was uh, as as one of the callers said calling in you know icky if you will or pleasant or fun um, I had to start to understand what that meant for me and, and develop my own style. And that's why I'm passionate about this, really passionate about the selling aspect. And I want to open today with a story because it really highlights just a, a different perspective on selling. And uh, last night, I just went to one of my favorite bands on the earth, Bon Jovi, and I, um, he's touring again. And I've been seeing him since, God, he, I mean, they've been doing it for 35 years, but I'm only 41, so I, didn't, I wasn't quite into him when I was that young, but uh, ever since uh, high school and college, so it's it's been 20 plus years that I've been into him and I go with my friends whenever he tours. So uh, this time I had an extra pair of tickets I bought because uh, some people that I, were gonna go to the show with us couldn't go, blah, blah, blah. So I had to sell these tickets. So there's a, there's a point to this story, right? So I had to sell these tickets and it was getting down to the wire and at, at the point of just besides putting it up on StubHub, which is, if you will, a, a ticket reseller. Um, they can, it's a platform where if you have tickets you want to sell, you can post them on there. You can also buy tickets. And obviously, you might have heard of something called Ticketmaster as well. So, what I did was I had the tickets and I posted them on Ticketmaster and StubHub and I was going to sell them. Now, as of two days ago, which was Sunday, the concert was Monday night. 
As of Sunday, guess what? The tickets hadn't sold yet. It's an ominous situation. Literally, I was sitting at my, my computer on Sunday. Um, and this is after you know all the Easter celebrations and stuff like this. So this is a little bit later on in the day because it happened to be Easter. And I'm like, man, I haven't sold these tickets yet. And if I don't sell these tickets, you know, I'm out several hundred dollars. And, and I'm like, I don't want to just like let these tickets go away. So um, I asked a few of my friends, some of my good friends that I knew were Bon Jovi fans. And I'm like, hey, listen, even my sister-in-law. And I'm like, hey, listen, you know what? I don't know if you like Bon Jovi or not, but I have these couple tickets and I was wondering if you wanted to go on me. It's kind of like a gift to you type of thing. Guess what? They didn't really like Bon Jovi or they liked him, but in order to coordinate what they need to coordinate with babysitters and kids and blah, blah, blah. It's just, how about this? The Even though the tickets were free, yeah, there's a cost involved of going and driving into Boston and parking and et cetera, but great floor seats. I mean, these are great tickets. Even though they were free, the value of them having to do whatever they needed to do, or even just to see Bon Jovi when they clearly weren't a fan like I am, it wasn't there. So there wasn't an exchange, right? And so my first point here with this story is, is that just remember when the value isn't there for somebody, it doesn't matter how much it costs. You'll hear me say many times that um, it's never about the money. Well, this proves that statement hundredfold because these tickets were free. And like I said, yeah, there was whatever, parking in Boston, 40 bucks, right? Gas to get to Boston from maybe where these were, round trip, maybe 10 bucks. So 50, 60 bucks, call it not the end of the world, but at the end of the day, um, free tickets, great tickets, there's no value there. So just in point, when there's no value, it's never about the money. It's always about value. There's my first point that I want to make there. Regardless, so I, I had these great tickets and I'm like, geez, I, I can't even give these damn tickets away. And it's not like it's this is a crummy event. I mean, it's Bon Jovi. It's great. But if you don't like him, you don't like him, right? So so then I'm sitting there. It's, it's later on in the day and I'm like, all right, so I can't really give these tickets away. I only have so many friends. So now what am I going to do? Well, I got to sell these tickets. And I looked at this and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you can do this. I'm like, your whole business is about selling. I'm like, you can sell coaching like like nobody's business. But I'm like, can you sell Bon Jovi tickets? This is the test, right? So of course it was on. So there I was, and I, I forget what time it was, call it, you know, four or five o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. And I'm like, I'm gonna sell these damn tickets and I'm gonna get good price for them still. So I said, all right, how do I sell these tickets? So, and, and this isn't exactly what I said in my head, but I'm, I'm spelling it out loud because this is really what w went on in my mind, just an elaborated version, which is gonna help you understand the fundamentals of selling in just a different perspective today, which is my goal, is, so I said to myself, I'm like, well, how am I gonna sell these tickets? Like, number one, what do I need? I need to find somebody who has a need. Now, you hear me talk about selling, having, okay, they need to have a need, I mean, something that they, they're really going after that they want and then the, the timing of that need. So really that's a fundamentals of selling in a nutshell, right? I've got to have a need and then the timing has to be now, right? So this is a little different because, well, does someone need to go to a Bon Jovi concert? Maybe, like I needed to go. It's been whatever, a couple of years or whatever it's been, or I think it was actually last year, but still I need to go. Um, it was more of a want. So I'm like, I had to find someone first that not necessarily a need in this case, but that really loves Bon Jovi. Because especially on the short notice of it being like the next day on a Monday night and someone might have kids and something, you know, and they're spending, you know, the tickets, you know, there's like $300 for the pair. So it's not that they're cheap or super expensive, but it's not like, oh, you know, 50 bucks, right? So they've got to have a really like a love for Bon Jovi and then they've got to love him enough to number one, make the necessary arrangements, potentially find someone else to go with them and then pay the money to get the tickets, right? So there's got to be something need. Is it going to be need? And it's got to work out for them. So I said to myself, so I'm like, well, obviously, if I've exhausted my network of, of people that, let's say, that I would want to give the tickets to, I'm like, how do I find people that, that I know that love Bon Jovi that are also in the area in Boston? Because I might know someone in California, but they're not flying out to Boston to see Bon Jovi, right? So there, there's there's a lot of the stipulation around that. And, and you can start to hopefully start to see the parallels of how this can turn into what we're doing with selling coaching with that, that product. 
So I said, I'm like, I, how do I find these people? So I went on and I said, you know what? Bon Jovi has a, a Facebook page on Facebook. And I'm like, well, does he? I'm like, he must. So I went on to Facebook and I found out he had a Facebook page. He had several of them. And I said, all right, well, one of these pages, how many people like this page? Okay, wow, 25 million people like his Facebook page. Great. Who's going to like a Bon Jovi Facebook page? Someone who likes Bon Jovi enough to find themselves there at one point and click the like button, right? And and that's just, that that tells you something, right? So then I'm like, all right, so now I find 25 million who, people who like Bon Jovi. Great. Well, I can't just find someone in the local area and I can Facebook stalk them and say, hey, you don't know me at all, right? This is what I would call a cold call, right? The likelihood of that happening and someone actually responding to me is very not likely. So I said, well, what if I found friends of mine on Facebook? You know, when I say Facebook friends, you know what I mean? Like they're quote, a Facebook friend and that are that I know that are in the area, the Boston area, who like Bon Jovi, right? So I obviously on Facebook, you can see your friends who like this same page as you do. And I had 141 Facebook friends that liked Bon Jovi. So I clicked on that and I started scrolling through and I had to pick people that number one, that I, I knew enough to be able to reach out to where they wouldn't think I would just be a Facebook stalker or they didn't know me at all. And number two, I had to find people that I knew or could find out very easily if they lived in, let's say, the Massachusetts, New Hampshire-ish area where they could travel, let's say, an hour or so to go to a Bon Jovi concert on a Monday night. So I found 10 people that fit that description. So I just narrowed down based on all this criteria, 25 million down to, what did I just say? Was it 15 people, right? So then I said, all right, well, I'm gonna reach out to these people. What am I gonna say? So this is what I would call an approach, right? And I have to have this approach be, I don't want it to be sleazy. I don't want it to be like, I'm just trying to, you know, get rid of my Bon Jovi ticket, et cetera, or whatever. So I said, all right, what am I going to say to them? And I basically thought it out and I basically came up with the approach and basically saying, hey, um, uh, how's it going? So I I did a a first personalization of like, I acknowledged that I knew this person and didn't go right into what I was wanting. Like, hey, how's it been going? It's been forever since we last talked. Hope things are going well or how are things going with you? Hey, listen, I have an extra pair of Bon Jovi tickets for tomorrow night. I did all the like little details, you know, 7.30, blah, 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 TD Garden, you know, in Boston. And I noticed that you liked the Bon Jovi Facebook page. So I figured, so I was straightforward. So I figured you liked Bon Jovi. So I thought I would reach out to see if you might be interested in an extra pair of tickets I have. And I said, you know, I, I'm selling these tickets. I paid... I think we paid um, $200 a piece for them. And at this point, I'm just looking to let them go at, you know, whatever someone's willing to pay because I want someone to enjoy the seats. If, if this is something that you're interested in, please let me know. If not, hope things are well and I'd love to hear, you know, what you've been up to. So I copied and pasted that and I just messaged each person with that. And then obviously with the first phrase, I just kind of, crafted it a little bit or changed it a little bit for each person because each person I have a different relationship, you know, and I've seen them at different time frames. So now over the next hour or so, a few people started getting back with me. And then one of the people that, that got back with me um, said, oh my God, I love Bon Jovi. I would love to go, but I've got to arrange blah, blah, blah with the kids, blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, an hour and a half later, I sold the tickets. So that was my story of, longer story, but I I took the time to kind of really comb through the details of that. And now as I start to parallel in the beginning of how this relates back to selling, when we sell our coaching, it's no different than this. I mean, yeah, there's differences obviously in circumstance and product, but I I wanna take it back to where I was at Sunday night going, how do I sell these tickets? So you've got this great product that you believe in. And instead of a Bon Jovi concert, it's your selling. And sorry, it's your selling, it's your coaching. And it's what you offer and how you can help people. And so now we've got to, in order to successfully sell this product that we have, right? We're not, it's not on a time frame like tomorrow night at 7.30 in Boston, right? We can coach anywhere, 
in the world, anybody, anywhere in the world um, at any time, right? So we have a lot less restrictions, but it's no different because we have to figure out, well, where do we find these people? And just like I had to ask, well, who likes Bon Jovi? And I said, well, there's got to be a Facebook page. And then the people who like that page must like Bon Jovi. So we've got to figure out, well, what do I have to offer? And this is what I call our headline, that helping who with what specifically. That's why it's so important to have that. Otherwise, people call it a niche, right? It's important to identify who do we want to help and what can we help them with specifically. Because if I just had tickets, let's say, to a concert, right? That was, that was well, is it rap? Is it rock? Is it reggae? Is it, you know, another form of music? Like, well, what kind of band is it? Well, who is it? Like, oh, no, it's just music, right? That That's a general niche where I can help everybody do everything is kind of like just saying, hey, I have tickets to a music concert, right? And well, where are the seats? Well, they're there in the arena. It's so vague. It's so general. How am I going to go about selling those tickets? I can't. Because the whole world's my marketplace. Who do I approach? What do I say to them? Right? How do I know that they might be interested or not? Or they have a, something I can help them with? Right? I don't. So you can see how there's a very strong parallel to this. So we've got to first, in order to really be able to sell our coaching, we've got to narrow down our niche. And we've got to identify that who, helping who with what specifically. So then when we can do that, now I know like, oh, I have Bon Jovi tickets for tomorrow night. Now I can find a place online. So now you know your who with what. And you say, well... Do, does this group of people, do these single moms, do these, you know, you fill in the blank, do these dentists, do these, you know, your who, do they have a Facebook page as an example? Do they have a Facebook group? Do they have a place on Twitter on another social platform? Do they have, is there a person out there that already has this group of people gathered in a forum or is there a convention going on with these people somewhere or an event or, or a seminar where these people are already gathered or where there, where there may be a social platform where they've expressed an interest that they like this topic and or need help with this topic that you are now offering, right? So now you can much more easily find those people. And now not only can you find those people, but going back to when I was giving the tickets away and the, the people that I, you know, was asking, you know, their close friends, family members, things like that, the value wasn't quite there for various reasons. Um, but the point is, I said, it's it's never about the money, meaning it's, oh, it's value-based. So now not only can you find these people, but you know, just based on an interest that there's an inherent value there because... For instance, they like Bon Jovi, right? Now, how much they like him or not, even though they like the page, well, I've got to determine that. Obviously, some people might like him, but based on everything in their life, it wasn't enough to be like, oh my God, like the person who bought them, oh my God, I love him, I want to go. And I will be do I'll be willing to do whatever it takes to rearrange my schedule to tomorrow night to make this happen and pay you this money. See that? So now you're finding this person that maybe they have an interest. So now where the conversation begins, just like the conversation where I reached out and I approached these, these quote, friends on Facebook because they like Bon Jovi and I had something that might have been of interest to them, as in goes our conversation, as we start to reach out to these people who have now expressed an interest because they're in a group or something like that where they need or want something that we are, can help them with, we have something of value that could help with, we start these conversations, I call this the sales conversation, or we find out a little bit more about what they're going through, what they're, what's happening in their world. Maybe they reached out and they expressed that they have a challenge that they're working through and we're following up on that a request or a question that they asked. Or maybe differently in this case, like with the Bon Jovi tickets, no one had posted, oh, I'm looking for Bon Jovi tickets, right? If I had found that, well, they obviously have a need or a want. Now let me start that conversation as well. But in this case, maybe they're not, expressing in these groups that, oh my God, I, I have a question, etc. but maybe they're there. And by being there, they inherently have a need. We just need to start a conversation to find out, well, hey, I saw you in this group. Tell me a little bit more what you're going through. Tell, tell me what brings you here. And then as that conversation goes on, that's where we can start to find out, do they have a need that they're really needing to, to, to work on or wanting to work through at this point in their life? And then how is the timing of that for them? So just like the Bon Jovi concert, you know, I didn't say, well, how is the timing of this for you, right? That's just a little weird, but 
it the timing had to have been good in order for them to do it because some people the timing wasn't right because guess what oh my god these are some of the responses like about oh my god i would love to see bon jovi he's my whatever my favorite my idol or i'm a huge fan but guess what i have to work tomorrow night guess what i have to blah 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 so what they're basically saying was i have a really big want for this and i would love to go but the timing just isn't right you following this? This is why it's so important and I wanted to give you the stories is because it's no different now as we come in here as if you start to have these conversations. And this is where we've got to develop the patience for it to unfold in its own pace. And this is where when people have a view of selling or the mindset of it, of the perception of it as being you know sleazy or pushy or ooey or icky as we said earlier, right, is... It's that's when we have an agenda that we're selling something. So the the flip version of the story, if I'm not approaching it from, let's say, what way I approach it from and the way I approach, you know, selling and what I teach here and what I do with my business, if I didn't approach it that way, I might have done what people would naturally do is, hey, I got a, I got a pair of Bon Jovi tickets and I'm looking to, you know, get rid of them. Do you want to buy them? Right? Do you see the difference in that approach compared to what I said before is I opened up and I said, hey, how's it going? I haven't talked to you in a while. What's up? Tell me what's going on. And it's like, hey, I, you know, I've got a pair of Bon Jovi tickets for this blah, blah, blah. And I noticed you like this Bon Jovi page. I don't know if it's of interest to you, but I thought I would reach out and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. Such a different approach versus like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of these tickets and I want to know if you want to buy them or some other version of that. And that's the way people tend to approach it is, is we just go to allow it to unfold, but most people will approach it from a very aggressive, like, hey, you should hire me as your coach. Or, you know what, I'm a coach. I'd love to give you a complimentary session and, um, and, and see how I can help you with that, right? Versus taking the time to ask and understand that need and why are they going through this and why is now the right time for them to really approach this? And then if you remember, Earlier in this this call, when I opened it up and I said, "Hey, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one mentor coaching," you know, if that's something you're considering or open to, you know, reach out. You know, I said, "Go to the Work with Me page, fill out the form. I will follow up with you. We'll create a conversation and see where we can go from there." And you know, or if you would be open to taking a closer look at how you could, I could help you if you were to hire me as your mentor coach, as opposed to, well, if you if if you're going through this and you're struggling or you don't want to struggle, you should hire me as your mentor coach. You see the difference in the approach there. It's all, it's all in, the, in the finesse, if you will, of the language. And as I role model these things here, it's, it's not like, oh, you need this certain finesse necessarily. It's just more of understanding how people respond or not. And it's when you have their best interest in mind, it's when you're honoring where they're at. And, it, and it's, it's, it's really simply just starting to, to honor that they're human beings. And we don't know if this is something that they're interested in. And, and I, I'm talking about Bon Jovi tickets. I'm talking about your coaching, or I'm talking about anything that you're doing or you're offering at some point in your in your business as a product and or service or in life in that general. So it's like when we have we have something that we have a value, we want to take that time to create that conversation and see where it goes.